Has he made you glad? Amen. Amen. Is Jesus your Lord? Yes. Amen. Isn't he wonderful? All the time. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. If you need an announcement sheet, raise your hand. I'm not sure we'll give you one. Praise God. We've got some handout sheets there you can look at that Don got for us. So read those, please. Amen. And then I just wanted to remind us that we are having choir practice after service today. And then we have play practice for those that are going to be in the play. That's at 1.30. So eat lunch and come back at 1.30 today for those that are in the play practice. To know if everyone was aware of that. So we want to make sure that we'll be doing that. It's getting time to do these things. Christmas will be here before we know it. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And a big thank you to all who volunteered for the fall festival. We're so thankful. We had a, approximately 370 people. We had four kids that got saved. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We had a bunch that Royce and Nancy prayed for, 40-some kids or more, right? So that was just really, they had some good ministry time. So we're just very thankful for that, and lots of good comp comments and compliments in the. Com yeah, what's that? Oh, Di yeah, oh yes, Diane too. Thank you. I know she did <laughs> very much so, and it kind of reformulated that whole thing. And and then Trish too, the beautiful balloon arch. It just broke my heart that she had to break those break those balloons up. But man, they were gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous balloons. So we're just really thankful for everyone that, that took part of that in any way. And there was a picture in the front page of the paper, if you notice that. So, amen. Praise God. And so, just look here, too. Um, the, the Operation Christmas Child boxes need to be here no later than November 17th. So the, the next Sunday, we only have one Sunday. So make sure you get them here, okay? And... You can go online to donate the $9, and you can print your own label. You can do it yourself. Or if you do that, if you're going to do that through the church, make sure you write that on the envelope, write circle other, write OCC, $9, so I know that it's your shipping and handling. How can I do that, Jane, so that we know the difference between someone who's donating and someone who actually has a box? Just let you know. Just put on the envelope, just say, this is for my boxes or something like that. Other, yeah, this is for, this is for, because some people are not give, doing boxes, but they're giving donation for it. See what I'm saying? So just say, for my boxes. If, I, if you write that on there, I'll know what you mean, for my boxes. Okay, that'll be easy, won't it? Yes, Jane. And we are out of boxes. They are all paid. <laughs> yeah. Don't let that hold you Hallelujah. Back. Amen. Isn't that awesome? If you didn't hear all that, and if you didn't hear it on Facebook Live, if anyone wants to help with that too, we we all sixty boxes have been taken. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! <laughs> that is awesome. I mean, that was when she said, "How many do you want this year?" So, sixty. <laughs> Stepping out by faith, and my goodness, we can do more. You know, so just keep going, going, and then um, praise God. Now, there's other things. I know Linda will be asking us in the future to do some um, the gifts for mid-Nebraska clients. We will have, it's in here, that we will have the Christmas party on the 17th of December, and then we will be getting presents for them. Now, another thing I want to hand, start this around is we're having our um, Couples and Singles Christmas Banquet. It's coming quickly. It may seem like it is a long ways away, but Saturday, December 4th at 6 p.m. with Larry Brown, and we're going to, Runcies from Hastings is going to provide the meal. We have to get the food and serve it, but um, they've done it for us several times, and it's really good food. So um, it explains on here that the meal is $14. You know, prices have gone up on things, so it's a little bit maybe higher than what we have in the past. But um, the menu is slow-cooked roast beef, garlic potatoes, sweet green beans, dinner salad, um, dressing, 
dinner roll with butter, and then the, the church ladies will provide delicious desserts to go with that. So I'm going to hand it around, make sure it gets around on the other side too, and indicate how many you and whoever else is with you, make sure. And it, we only have one choice this year, so we don't have two different meats this year, because he's doing another event, uh, a wedding, so he was able to get us in because he just makes some extra food for us, and we'll get it fresh that afternoon, so it will be good. Amen? Praise the Lord. Okay. What else am I thinking? Oh, yes, i got to read something here. <laughs> All right. Lyndall handed me, you remember that we helped Lyndall's sister, Susan, um, she lives in Colorado, correctly, and, and Richard is a gentleman that um, her and her husband take care of, development, developmentally disabled, and um, he had um, been fighting cancer, and then he'd been taking treatments, and um, we sent him birthday cards. Remember that? Well, let me, here's a little testimony. And he's talking about he had his fourth cycle of chemo and second cy cycle of immuno immunotherapy yesterday. He has good energy and no side effects still. His blood work results from Friday were excellent. The carcinogens now came down from 10,700 to 3,300. They are to be below 39, so we have a ways to go still, but they have been dropping by 2,000 per chemo cycle. There's a slight increase in his liver function as well. He has lost all the swelling in his thighs, calves, and ankles. His feet are almost normal size as well. The fluid in his abdomen, abdomen is gone, and his liver is shrinking and softening. He is eating a regular diet again. No more puree. We are thickening his liquids due to some aspiration. I believe that is what the cough was way back when he lived in Nebraska, but couldn't get a doctor to test for it. He's walking three to four times a day outside, up and down the, the drive and around the house. He does his therapy exercises two times a day with some props, LOL. From the original <laughs> diagnosis to now has been nothing short of a miracle. Thank you for all your thoughts and prayers. And that's what we believe it. We believe God for. Um, Lyndall, thank you so much for asking the congregation to send cards. It took his, him the t entire day to open all his cards and gifts. <laughs> and I can just imagine him very meticulously going through and reading every little thing I can imagine. It. Please thank you, thank you, everyone, for their thoughts and prayers. God's favor is shining down, Susan. So praise the Lord. Isn't that awesome? What a good testimony. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, God is good. Amen. That's awesome. Okay, so we have one more video of Operation Christmas Child. Since I like these videos. These are really inspirational to me. So let's watch a, another OCC video. My name is Jane Marie Franks, and we are in my backyard in Clifton, Tennessee. And this is just my quite small town, quite home. <laughs> I love Operation Christmas Child. I know that some kid is going to get a blessing out of it, and I always think, what if I was in that position of receiving that box? Just thinking about how much a box could just change a kid's life, it's just so incredible. We originally started packing shoe boxes with my church, and my family has continued since. We have done shoe boxes since she was small, but we didn't do as many as we do now. That was always exciting to her to go buy things to fill a shoe box. Each year when it comes around, we go to stores like Hobby Lobby and pick out each item. I can't wait to get the paper, the pencil. Crayons, toothbrushes. I also like the cuddly toys. Hats, gloves. My favorite item is a teddy bear. <laughs> We couldn't have children. So Carolyn said that to me for years and years on end, to, but let's adopt, let's adopt. And I said, if you want to adopt, let's have at it. But when I got home, we were signed up to 
to start the, the process. And so here we are, this what, 15 and a half years later, we've, we've got Jane Marie. I was born in Guatemala. I was adopted and was six months old when I was brought to Clifton, Tennessee. God wanted me to be here, and so he allowed me to come into their lives. It was in 2019 that I got to go back and visit my home country and to learn more about the history, the culture, the people. And I remember this one boy asking for money to be able to go to school. You know, in the morning on Monday, I dread going to school. That's my nightmare. But to him, that was his dream. And that was something that really struck me to want to start packing shoeboxes even more for kids. That touched her so much that uh, she has a desire to help others. Operation Christmas Child opens up a way for a child to learn about the gospel. Just something so small could just mean the world to somebody else. Last year, I had the opportunity to pack with just my family, 500 alone, and this year for my 16th birthday, we had the opportunity to invite a bunch of people to pack another 500 boxes. It was so much fun. We have learned that I think over 160 million shoe boxes have been delivered all around the world into remote locations because I always go and look, where did our shoe boxes go? To me, it means the last three verses in Matthew go forth, preach, teach, and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And this is the way for us to go through Operation Christmas Show. And this entire journey has just been so amazing. I only just hope to encourage others to share the good news. It might be 500 boxes, it might be one, it might be two. I just hope to share with you all the joy of giving to others, allowing God to use you. The best way to describe it is just awesome. <laughs> Thank you. These are so great. Well, praise the Lord. Just know that you're part of that when you're giving too. Amen. Well, why don't you go around and greet everybody and tell them Jesus loves you and so do I.
idea. Oh, shut up now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> Do a little dance. <laughs> All right. Very good. Shut you down, but it's time to get going here. All right. Amen. Well, it's offering time. Just want to the opportunity to. Uh, so, if you're tithing this morning, we appreciate that. And uh, again, if you just want to mark your envelope, it helps the uh, bookkeepers out. Makes it all work better. And uh, even above and beyond your tithe. Um, Mission project for the month is uh, Conduit Missions with uh, Darren Tyler, and uh, they're doing a lot. They're doing a lot down there. They got a new building they're in, and it's really neat. I don't know if you've been on their website at all, or looked at Conduit Missions at all, or get their stuff. But uh, um, very good. And it's neat, and uh, they're doing a lot. And uh, so it's great to be a part of what's what's going on. They've been. They're real adamant about, uh, I know I've said, I've talked about this before, but about freeing these prisoners, these slaves that are uh, in the brick factories, the big fa brick foundries, and they go in and they, so if the individual has a debt, then they get, they can't pay the debt, so then these brick foundries, brick factories, whatever, they uh, get them and then they work for them and it turns out that they work for them for the rest of their life because they can never make enough money to pay the, to pay the debt because they have to pay for staying there and they have to pay for their food and then they have to pay for, you know, so they never get the debt paid off. So what Darren's church, Conduit Missions, is doing is they're going in and paying the whole debt all at one time so then these individuals are free and they get to, so, and if they're, they have children while they're there, they become a slave also. So the whole family's a slave. So, so they go in and they, and they, I don't know for sure how many they're up to, but I know it's over 100 families that they've rescued. And, I, and he said one time how much money they've actually spent to do that. And it's, it's an incredible amount of money. And so being part of all that going on, whatever, whatever this offering will go to, I don't know for sure, but, but I know it goes to them. And they, they funnel a lot of money. They... They conduit missions, so they conduit church, so they the money goes straight through them, and they're in a uh, interesting part of the country where they have a lot of they, they have a, their church is growing. You know, I don't know what it is up to now seven, six, seven, eight hundred people, I suppose, nine hundred maybe, and they get new people all the time. So it's a it's a moving area, so people are in and out, moving and stuff. But it's one of the fastest growing places in the country too. Uh, go there and try to buy a piece of property. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. So, uh, but they're doing a lot, and so it's, it's fun to be a part of what's, what they're doing. Amen? And uh, so here, if you want to give above and beyond, you can give towards that, or Pastor Patsy's moving expenses, and then we also have the building. We're still working on that. We're getting some new stuff here. Uh, we've got a new back door, so we've got to put that in here soon, and a few other things we're doing. Get finished up. Make it look neat. It's looking good. So, just appreciate all your parts in that. Amen. So, uh, I've got a scripture here for you this morning. It's Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16. And it says, I'm not sure what translation this is. And it says this, And do not forget to do good and share with others, for with, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. Hebrews 13, 16. Do not forget to do good and share with others. So it's Thanksgiving time, right? November. So it's time to, th we really need to uh, be grateful for what we have. But the interesting part of that verse, I thought, was for such sacrifice, God is pleased. It's a sacrifice to go out and give above and beyond. It's a sacrifice to dip into your wallet and to help someone and encourage someone 
you know, go buy $100 of the groceries. That's a sacrifice to give away or whatever amount. You know, it's a sacrifice to go pay someone's utility bill or to help them with a tank of gas or whatever. That's a sacrifice. But God keeps track. Never have to worry because God's good, God is really a good bookkeeper. He keeps track. He knows what to forget and he knows what to remember. And this he remembers. Amen? All right. So just remember that. Whenever you're doing it, you're not necessarily doing it for yourself or for the individual. You're helping that individual, but, but it's, it's really a blessing to God. Because how does God work in the earth? He works through people. He works through us. And if he's going to reach people, he has to work through us. And what's the fastest way to a person's soul? It's feed them. Take care of them. Help them. Encourage them. Amen? All right. Well, let's just pray. Father, we thank you so much for what you're doing. We thank you, Lord, that we're sensitive and listening and, and want to be a part of what's going on. Help us to, be, to keep in mind all the things that you're doing. Help us to see and, and be a part of all that's going on. Help us to do what we're supposed to do to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we have a confession. As I tithe to give offerings, I'm leaving you, Lord, for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits and promotions, sales and commissions, estates and inheritances, interests and income, rebates and returns, discounts and dividends, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills decreased, bills paid off, Blessings and increase and greater victories in the midst of greater odds. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my needs. I may have more than enough to give to promote the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name.
you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. We worship you. We praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your holy name. Glory to your holy name. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. We worship you, Jesus. We praise you. We bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to your holy name. Glory to your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you. Oh, we praise you. We bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to your holy name. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you. We praise you. We bless you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to say a few things really quick. You know, we were at men's conference on Friday night. Pastor Hagen um, talked about Byron August. He's been there 33 years. He said, when you look up faithfulness in the dictionary, you'll see Byron August's picture <laughs> under there. But I'm going to say... Right next to it is Kathy Weiss's picture. Because she is so faithful. Hallelujah. And I want to thank her. She's fighting symptoms, but she's up there. She's leading worship. You know, and, and God is so good. And this is what the Lord said to do today. He said we're going to get vaccinated this morning. Now, don't get up in arms. <laughs> I'm not going to make you get a, get a, get a needle. This is what's so nice about it. You don't have to poke yourself with a needle. The vaccination is the administration of a vaccine to help the immune system develop protection from a disease. Do you know we already have that? It's called Psalm 91, verse 10. No accident shall befall you, and no contagious disease shall come near you. So thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We're going to vaccinate ourselves right now. And you don't have to take a needle, but you need to lift your hands. And you need to praise the Lord. And you need to say, say this after me. Thank you, Lord. You are my healer. Jesus, you're the great physician. You are the one that purchased my healing. The devil is defeated. The devil is done for. <laughs> done for. He, is he is defeated. COVID-19, COVID-19 and, all and all of its variants are defeated. Are defeated. We, trample we trample on you in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. We have authority over you. Authority over and thank you right now you. from the top of my head. And if you want to bend down and do it, you can, or I'm going to do it like this to the soles of my feet. I am vaccinating myself according to Psalm 9110. Every organ, every tissue is protected from COVID and all its variants. The healing power of God is flowing through me. Right now, affecting a healing and a cure. So, if there's anything in my body that's not right, you get right. Right now, hallelujah! Be healed and whole. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, ha, 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 ha. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we lift up Sharon. We lift up all her family. Symptoms have to leave.
the name of Jesus, they are healed of the Lord. Touch them on the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. Every single one of them is healed and whole. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it. Pastor Patsy, her back is healed and whole, and, and she's able to move and walk without any pain or discomfort. In the name of Jesus, Kathy Roder, he, healing power is flowing through her. Symptoms have to, cold symptoms have to leave. In the name of Jesus, our dear, wonderful Kathy Weiss is healed in the hole from allergies. They have to leave in the name of Jesus. If there's anybody else, Father God, we are in agreement and we're thanking you for it. And it's done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Anybody out there watching on Facebook, you are the heel of the Lord. You've been vaccinated along with us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. So praise God. You are the heel of the Lord. And no sickness or disease shall come near you. And you don't have to fear no fear. Hallelujah. What, whatsoever, no fear whatsoever. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. How's that for being just a little bit different there? <laughs> and Because I'm listening to what the voice of the Holy Ghost says to do. And amen. You just remember that you did that today, November, whatever today is, the 7th. <laughs> November 7th, okay? And I don't want to forget this because there's just a lot going on. But we, and Keith is gone. I don't know, is there anybody else that, that's a veteran? But we just want to honor our veterans. We, we honor you, Keith, if you, ever, if you get to watch this on Facebook. He's had his last Sunday to work, he said. He sent a text, so he's working. But we appreciate all of our service members, and we just give God glory and honor, and we just want to say thank you to our veterans. Don't forget the veterans. Be very, very thankful for them. Amen. For all they, they have done for us. Amen. Well, I think we'll just um, go ahead and let Don share first. Um, Tim was Tim Spear was going to go. He's he he's doing really well, but he had fought some symptoms earlier in the week, and he felt like in, he needed to just get rest. And I believe you, that's wisdom. And and so. Um, Don and I went on, and we, we did, and we had a great time, and, and his son-in-law, Dale, was with us, too, so we had a good time together, and we got to see um, Bruce and Marsha and have supper at their house on Friday night, and they're it's just so happy, and it was a wonderful time, and, and I got to see my friend Kevin, and he's going to be coming in June to share about Pakistan, and all the wonderful, exciting things are happening there. Their new building is just about finished, and they had like six or 700 people it, it holds a thousand people and just about has that done. And he said, for the first time ever, they weren't able to pay their bills. They weren't able to meet their budget. But he didn't get all worked up about it. He just took the money out of his bank, his personal account, and paid it. And I said, I just went on. He says, you know, ever since I did that, he said, the next month, not only did we pay that completely back, we paid the next month's thing. We have more money than we've ever had. And he says, I don't know how it came, but it just came. I said, hallelujah. I said, it wasn't some big gift that somebody, no, it just said, came for all kinds of different people. I said, thank you, Jesus. Divine provision. Oh, that's just awesome. So I'm going to let Don come up here and he can share what he got out of our out of the conference. Wore my badge so everybody can see. Don Polly asked me if I know who I am. <laughs> but if you don't know who I am, you can read this. <laughs> it says as I was at the at the uh, what's called ascend, going up. So I'm going to get behind the pulpit. <laughs> One of the things I got out of it was an earache. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the music in there, I have a decibel meter on my watch. This is an Apple watch. And it was over 100 decibels in that room. 
and they sing for a long time. Wow. Okay, so the decibel reading in here this morning was like 75. But every 10 decibels that it goes up, it's 10 times louder. So 70 to 80, 80 to 90, 90 to 100. Let's see. That's what? 30 times louder. <laughs> no wonder I had an earache. Okay, anyway. <laughs> I was grateful for the music. <laughs> yeah, it's real. <laughs> if you don't believe me, go down your there yourself. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> so we had a good time. But um, as I said, the the theme of the conference, according to what Pastor Hagen wanted to do, was ascend, go up. Okay. All the speakers followed that theme, which I really appreciated. Um, the one I'm going to talk about is from Pastor Josh Pennington, and he had a really good message. I'm not going to share all of it, but I have chosen a, a segment of, of his message that is near and dear to my heart because he's talking about the, our government in here. And you're going to be surprised, I think, what he had to say. So I'm just going to read. This is pretty much word for word what he said. How can we see God in a biblical perspective? And he quotes Matthew 19, 26. With God, all things are possible. Don't allow yourself to think that everything is supposed to be easy. Life is sometimes hard, but we have to remember, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. That's John, 1 John 4, 4. So trying to make life easy is a mistake. It's not going to be easy. Oh, I added that part. Okay. Today, the government is trying to convince us that life is supposed to be easy. You care if I make little comments as they go along? <laughs> They're handing out money left and right. I mean, I, I put it in my bank account, but I suppose some people need it more than I do. And, and, but um, whatever. It's not supposed to be that easy. We're supposed to have a job and earn our money. Amen. Not just hand it out to people that don't want to apply for a job because their government's paying them money. Okay. That's my little take on that. He says, as American Christians, we have taken on a democracy belief system that does not coincide with the biblical pattern of life. Now, I had to think about that. So he went ahead and explained it. When it comes to governmental systems, democracy is a, quote, government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Some people think that is in the Constitution. It's not. That is a quote from President Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address in November of 1863. But it's true anyway. This is, beautiful. this is beautiful, except that when you take your democracy mindset and read the kingdom scriptures, okay, that's in the Bible, you have to realize that God is not a democracy-thinking person. God doesn't care how many people you get to vote on your side, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican or an Independent or any other party. There, there's even a Green Party. Did you know that? Yeah. God's word will never change. What he said, he meant for the, fir the first time he said it. And here's this quote, of the people, by the people, and for the people. We're so conditioned to believe that way, aren't we, here in this country? But what happens when you have to shift and realize that God isn't functioning in a democracy? The only thing God is moved by is what he has said in his word. He's functioning in a kingdom. And in a kingdom, it isn't of the people, by the people, and for the people. It is of the king, by the king, and for the king. <laughs> and nothing else matters. When you begin to defy what the government says... 
Yeah, a lot of people are defying the vaccine mandates. And they're not a law. This is my comment here. <laughs> vaccine mandates are just something that King Biden said. No, he's not our king. He can't make law. He can't just say it and everybody do it. That's why there are so many court cases coming against these things right now. And they're winning, too. They're winning, too. So I'll go back and say this again. God's kingdom, so it's made up of, of the king, by the king, and for the king, and nothing else matters. When you begin to defy the government, what the government says, or what, quote, quote, President Biden says, and you say what God has said, you honor God by defying the norms that are being built around us. You know, life has changed a lot in the last two years. People have accepted that as normal. It's not. All this stuff with inflation and shortages, it's all just created by man so that we can be controlled. We don't want to have to receive that because we're not of that democracy kingdom. We're of God's kingdom. Our purpose should be to overcome and be everything God has designed us to be. God doesn't just want us to do it. He wants us to, let's see, how did I, oh, I must have left out a word. God doesn't just want us to do it. He wants us to want to do it. That's what it was. Obedience isn't enough. It is being willing and obedient to God's kingdom. That's Isaiah 119. Be willing and obedient. Follow after what God wants us to do. Well, that's my little sermon. <laughs> I hope you believe it and follow after it like I do. Okay. Um, so that little insert that Pastor John put in there, there's one from, what is it, Intercessors for America? And the other one from Dutch Sheets, I thought they went hand in hand. And um, I hope everybody is reading those, and getting a lot out of it. I'm not wasting my time doing that, am I? Okay. All right. God bless you. Pastor John wants to share some more, I'm assuming. Okay, well, we'll just start with our Bible confession. Let's just lift our Bibles to the Lord and say our confession together. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I'll never be the same. Never, 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 I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you for the time that we had at the, the men, call to arms men's conference, and we thank you for all that was imparted to us. And for all those 600 men that were there, Father, we thank you that they'll go back and make a difference and ascend in their own lives and ascend in, in their churches and ascend and, and, and get the message out to all of us to, to send to go higher with you, Father. We thank you for what you want to do. You want us to reach our potential. You want us to do and, and to reach higher and not to be satisfied where we're at, but to go further with you. We thank you for it, Lord. And I thank you for each person here today. Holy Ghost, stir them up. That they won't be satisfied to just be right where they're at, to the same old, same old, just to be where they've always been. No, but to go farther, to go higher. And we thank you for it, Holy Spirit. And we thank you for what you want done and said today. We thank you for the anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage. And we receive it, and we give you the glory, honor, and praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. i got to have some good old jokes for you. I heard this one on the radio. What does a turkey get when he adds three plus five? What does a turkey get when he adds three plus five? He gets eight. 
<laughs> now, Don gave me this one, okay? So you can blame him if you don't like it. If you divide the circumference of a pumpkin by its diameter, and what do you get? Pumpkin pie. <laughs> That's the kind of pumpkin pie that Don, he, he likes the, the other kind too, I think. Okay, these are some of my really corny jokes. <laughs> and, I don't, and I told Glenn Bartley that I didn't care. <laughs> I said, I did it when I got back last night and I just got some that I thought was funny. What did the turkey say to the turkey hunter on Thanksgiving Day? Quack, quack. <laughs> and if you don't... <laughs> And one of my favorite um, cartoons is, du is Bugs Bunny and, and Daffy Duck with Elmer Fudd. And they, just, they have this sign, duck hunting, rabbit hunting. It's so fun. It's hilarious. Duck, duck season, rabbit season. Oh, it's funny. Why did the farmer have to separate the chicken and the turkey? Why did the farmer have to separate the chicken and the turkey? He sensed foul play. You're getting the same deal as me. <laughs> what key has legs and can't open a door? You better get this one. A turkey. <laughs> what, why, did the, why did they let the turkey join the band? Because he had his own drumsticks. James might like that one. <laughs> Glenn's kind of outdoing himself today. That's pretty good. What happened to the, what to the, happened to the turkey when he got, they got into a fight? Oh, I love this. He got the stuffing knocked out of him. <laughs> hey, I think those are wonderful. <laughs> Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, you know? <laughs> Amen. Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> I hope he is. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> You know, I do have opportunities to walk in love every <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> okay. But, but I wanted to say this. I told Don he, I was going to drive, but he had to talk to me. So we, we, we talked a lot, and we had, had a good conversation. I thought this was a good one. And I told him I would say something about it, too. And, and this is something that Brother Hagen taught us in the late 80s. And I don't think a lot's been taught about it. And I... And not in any way criticizing anybody. I just want you to realize it's okay to clap in church. Because like when we're singing, it's okay to clap. And it's when someone pre does something and they sing, it's good to clap. But just be careful not to substitute clapping for praise and worship or for praising God. Because there's opportunities when we're worshiping God and we're real excited. And Brother Hagin, the Lord Jesus told Brother Hagin, clapping is neither praise nor worship. So it's okay to give honor to where honors do. Like when Don got up or when someone clap, someone is up here, it's okay to clap, and it's okay to clap when you're doing a praise song. But when you move into the worship part of the service and you'll be real respectful, then the best thing is to lift your hands and praise the Lord. And the clapping is more for, for applause. A, applause, and it's not the spiritual, me, the spiritual thing of it. Okay, so that's just the, I'm not, correcting anybody or but I just think that would be a good thing to to keep in your mind because it got drilled into me and all of us Raven students back then and we don't hear that a lot and I and I know I haven't taught that so I thought I needed to let you know about this so you never have heard that but clapping is neither praise nor worship so you know just remember that's so beautiful to lift your hands to be able to praise the Lord and to just worship him and get into his presence we need that amen so that's, that's just a little bonus. What? what about yes, you can do that too. And, and that's talking about praise time. And you can praise him. 
And you can praise, hallelujah. That's during praise time. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But when we're worshiping and being really quiet, you know what I'm saying? When we went beyond the praise, enter into his courts with thanksgiving, into his gates with praise, enter his gates with praise, then we get into worship, and then we, and there's a time when it's not really appropriate to do that. You see what I'm saying? Time to be quiet, but a time to be joyful. And, then there's no, and loud crashing cymbals, you know, all kinds of percussion. You know, that's good. That's scriptural. That's biblical. So. <laughs> what he's doing is biblical. So, but then there's times when we worship him and we reverence him. You just realize that there's diff different times in the service. And different services are different, too. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, just a little teaching there. If you have any questions, come see me and I'll be glad to talk to you about it. But praise the Lord. So, Pastor Hagen, as we said, his, his, um, the Lord put on his heart the, um, to ascend. That's what the conference was about, ascend. And so his message on Thursday night was ascending to a higher life, ascending to a higher life. And he looked up the definition of ascend. It means to mount, to climb, to move upward. And look at Genesis 1, 26 to 28. Genesis 1, 26 to 28. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock and all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. So here God says and tells mankind to be fruitful and multiply. So it's God's idea for man and woman to reproduce, okay? That's nothing bad. That's, that's what God desi desi desires. And Pastor Hagen said it, you know, in a little different way than what Pastor Patsy says. He says, if you don't know who you are or what you are, check your plumbing. <laughs> you're either a man or you're a woman, okay? Didn't think we'd have to say how many, I don't know how many different genders mankind has come up with now. It's ridiculous. There's two. <laughs> there's man and there's woman, okay? Amen. So that's why we had a men's conference for men. That's why we have a ladies conference for the ladies, kindle the flame, and then call to arms. Amen. Oh, and the, 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 I love the stage, the way they decorated it, because they had, they had four-wheelers on there. They had actual four-wheelers that some of the grandkids had um, ridden. D Dennis would like that. <laughs> he talked about some of their four-wheeling experiences. And then they had a mountain. They made a mountain. They had snow, not real snow, fake snow, all around the, the different, they decorated it up. And then a light at the top of the mountain and made it look like a big mountain. I loved it. It was really neat. And so... Mankind is God's highest creation. We are God's highest creation. Man has, to, has a drive in, in him and her to rise, to ascend, to fulfill a purpose. God put that in us so that we are to ascend. We're not to, to just stay where we're at. We're to keep going higher from where we were. We're to, we're to continue to learn, to grow. And, and you say, well, I'm too old. No, you aren't. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. You are never too old to learn. Amen? Amen. And you have to, to, sometimes we have to break out of our comfort zone. It's not very comfortable to learn new things the older we get. I'm one of those that likes to just be stuck in my own same old, same old. I like that. But God has taken me out of that. And, and to, to ascend is to overcome obstacles and to reign in life. And there are obstacles, or as Pastor Egg would say, obstacles uh, along the way, okay? And, and you have to overcome them. Every person attempts to go higher in some way. Now, if a person tries to do it on their own, well, look what I can do. And mankind can do so much. But this is why I really like what he said. He said, it's a counterfeit to God's plan. 
doing it on our own and do, see what I can do, that's a counterfeit to what God has for you. What a beautiful plan God has for each one of us. What a wonderful design he's made for each one of us to do things for him. And so if we try to do it on our own, we are trying to do it and we are counterfeiters. Thrill seekers live for earthly power and accomplishment. And so we need to do it for God. Then I thought this was really wonderful that he mentioned Dr. Ed Cole. And he mentioned the book, Maximized Manhood. Well, do any of the men in our church recognize that? I hope you do. Our Tuesday night grub and grow guys have been going through the book, Maximize Manhood, and the workbook too. And so Pastor Hagen used things from the book. I thought, wow, we're right on target. Because <laughs> God's... God led us to do that, and then Pastor Hagen, he ministered from that. And he talked about how God led the Israelites out of Egypt. They were slaves, but God wanted them to ascend. He wanted them to go into Canaan land. Canaan land represents our maximum potential. Every Christian is supposed to, to reach their maximum potential, to strive for that, okay? Look at Numbers 13, 1 through 2. And then keep it there because we're going to go in farther in Numbers after that. Numbers 13, 1 through 2. The Lord now said to Moses, Send out men to explore the land of Canaan, the land I am giving to the Israelites. Send one leader from each of the twelve ancestral tri tribes. So they're supposed to go out and they're supposed to explore. And then we go to verses 25 to 32. 25 to 32. Excuse me. After exploring the land for 40 days, the men returned to Moses, Aaron, and the whole community of Israel at Kadesh in the wilderness of Paran. They reported to the whole community what they had seen and shown, showed them the fruit they had taken from the land. This was their report to Moses. We enter the land you sent us to explore, and it is indeed a bountiful country, a land flowing with milk and honey. Here is the kind of fruit it produces. But the people living there are powerful, and their towns are large and fortified. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. The Amalekites live in the Negev, and the Hittites, Jebusites, and the Amorites live in the hill country. The Canaanites live along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea and along the Jordan Valley. But Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go at once to take the land, he said. We are certainly able to conquer it. But the other man who explored the land with him disagreed. We can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. So they spread this bad report about the land among the Israelites. The land we traveled through and explored will devour anyone who goes to live there. All the people we saw were huge. So look at what they did. They took God's report, the good report, and they, spread, they, they mixed unbelief with it and they just destroyed the whole thing. Unbelief was the final straw that caused them not to ascend. They refused to believe it was possible to take the promised land. Even though God had provided people that Caleb and Joshua knew in their hearts they could do it. They knew that God was with them. They had part of the Red Sea. They were able to escape the Egyptians. God, God had done miracles for them. And they still were not willing to believe. Look at 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 10. 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 10. This is a scripture that Dr. Cole uses. Moreover, do I not want, moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and the sea, all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank out of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with most of them, God was not well pleased, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. So that's the first thing that, that hinders us from reaching our potential is lust. And do not become idolaters as were some of them. So idolatry is the second thing. As it is written, the, men, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Now let us commit sexual immorality. That's the third thing. As some of them did, and in one day 23,000 fell nor let us tempt Christ. That's the fourth thing. 
as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed by serpents, nor complain, as some of them also complained, and were destroyed by the destroyer, murmuring and complaining. That's the fifth thing. So those are five things that Dr. Cole and then Pastor Hagen brought out. Lust, and lust isn't necessarily sexual. There's, you lust for all kinds of things in this earth. Things that, that are just temporal. Fame and fortune and money and, 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 and all these in the homes and, and, and vehicles and all these things. Well, they're just all natural things that are going to, to, to be destroyed. They're not going to last. And then there's idolatry. What, and anything that comes before God becomes an idol in your life. Even though you don't make a statue, don't see too many statues around Superior in front of people's houses. Well, I worship this God. But it's very easy to do when you put something before God. Sexual immorality, I don't even have to tell you how bad a problem that is with the Internet and, and all pornography and all the different things. Tempting God... Is, is, and we learned about this in the men's group. It's when you're a, you're a Christian and you're representing Christ and you're not doing things the way that God would do them, you're not living the life, you're not being an example, you're tempting Christ, you're tempting God. When you're doing things and you're, you're cheating on your taxes, you're um, stealing or you're um, cheating your customers, you don't have integrity. Those, those things are tempting, tempting Christ, tempting God. And then murmuring and complaining, how easy is it to, for us to do that? <laughs> and so we have to nip that in the bud, as Bonnie, Barney Fife would say, nip it. And, and, and we all are guilty of doing that. I, I see myself and I say, okay, God, I'm sorry. And help us to be thankful people. Because we don't, shouldn't have to wait till Thanksgiving to be thankful. But this is a good reminder. Be thankful. Be appreciative of everything that you have. You know, and I remember saying that Wednesday night, and I asked Kevin, I said, now, did I tell the people right? I said, there's no sewer systems in Pakistan. He says, there are some, but there's not that many. And so the water, the sewage, raw sewage runs through the, the cities. He said, now, ours... We do have our own tank, septic tank and such. They don't have city water. They don't have a, t a tank. They have, like, this, like we do on the farm, they have, we have our own wells and our own pressure tanks and such. Everybody has to have that in, in, in where they live in Pakistan. Can you imagine that? They don't have city water. They all have to have their own um, pump and do all. So, our, I mean, just the water, aren't we thankful for, for what we have? There's just so much to be thankful. Knowing that you're going to drink the water and not get sick and be full of parasites. When we went to Guatemala, we were told, don't drink the water. And we had some people that drank it because they were told it was pure water and it wasn't. And they got sick, really sick. So just something like that. Here's a really nugget that Pastor Hagen told us. I love it. He said, sin and termites are alike. Sin and termites are alike. Both will weaken and undermine whatever they touch. Isn't that good? Sin and termites are alike. They both will weaken and undermine whatever they touch. Oh, that's, that's very profound, okay? Decide to believe God's promises and believe the word of God. God is looking for people who will stand up for what is right. God is looking for people to ascend. And he's looking for you. Are you there? Or, or, or as Brother Hagin says, are you gone home? Did you already, did you already leave the service <laughs> mentally? Okay. Da Daniel 1.8. Daniel 1.8. This is what we have to do today. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. You know, he ate, and you know, we're learning about the Daniel plan in our healthy living class. We started learning about that. But Daniel purposed in his heart to be the man that God, God called him to be. 
he purposed. He had to make a decision. He had to be intentional. It just didn't fall on him. He had to decide. And he didn't have anybody else around saying, all right, Daniel, you can do it. You can do it, Daniel. You can do it. You can do it. No. He did it himself. He encouraged himself. God, of course, was his strength and encouragement, but he had to make the decision that I'm going to live for God. I'm in this foreign land. Everyone around me is worshiping other gods. I am, you know, but he had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but, you know, he didn't have a lot of support system. We have a big support system just in this church. It's wonderful. So, but you have got to be intentional. You have got to purpose in your heart. I'm not going to let the world defi defile me. I'm not going to let other people defile me. I'm not going to let the internet defile me. I'm not going to let TV defile me. I'm not going to let all these other things defile me. I'm going to purpose in my heart to live the life that God intended for me to live and to go higher in Him. Amen? There's a whole lot of things that are trying to keep you from going higher. John 12, 32. John 12, 32. It says, and, and I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. Lift Jesus up. As we lift him up, he will draw all people to themselves. Faith will open doors that can't be opened in the natural. And we've talk, been talking about faith. It will open doors that we cannot open in the natural. And we always get bags when we go to men's conference. I thought this was a really attractive bag. But I noticed it was a backpack, too. It could be, well, or it could be put behind, or however you want to say it. I guess it's carried, too. But, you know, if you're going to go up a mountain, you better take a bag with you. You better take some supplies with you. It depends how long you're going to go up, okay? I think I told a few weeks ago about my experience of going up a mountain and, you know, how we left early in the morning. And we had to take flashlights. We took water. We took jackets because they said it was going to get cold up there. You should take a snack. You should take different things with you that you need to have so that you can be prepared for the journey. Well, I made a spiritual backpack today. i got to have a soft heart. And that's what Pastor Hagen's, my message, the first part of this message says, have a soft heart. Don't harden your heart to God. Don't harden your heart. That's what happened to the Israelites. That's why they didn't go into Canaan land, because they hardened their hearts. They didn't listen to the voice of the Lord. So important today, because there's so many things you're going to hear, and there's things gonna, you're going to hear that aren't right. And it's gonna, if you're not careful, you can harden your heart to the things of God. Don't let the world, don't let other people, don't let things harden your heart to God. Keep it soft. Keep your heart. Be teachable. Don't be rebellious. Be teachable. Listen. So important. Now I'm just going to, because I'm running out of time already, I'm just going to go real briefly through some of the other um, ones that Minister Jordan Gash he was a younger um, pastor who ministered to, to us. He says, never underestimate what God can do with one person or one family. You know, you're one person, but God can use you in a tremendous way. Look at Psalm 61 2. Psalm 61 2. It says, from the end of the earth I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And you know, I think with COVID and all the things that have happened, a lot of people's hearts have been overwhelmed. People have just emotionally been closed up and not able to be around other people. Their hearts have been overwhelmed. But he says, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. If the rock is higher than I, and if you're being led to the rock, you're led to go higher. You're led to climb. You're led to get up to where he is. That's Instead of going down, you go up. You're ascending. Ascend, me, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That's what God is wanting you to do, to go up to the rock. And your heart will not be overwhelmed when you come to the place where God is. 
when you come to his presence, when you take time in his presence to worship him, you will not be overwhelmed. And here's an, uh, what he said was, whatever you are impressed with has power to influence your life. Whatever you are impressed with has power to influence your life. Yeah. I talked about when I was a kid how I was like Muhammad Ali and Bruce Jenner. I thought they were awesome. Well, I don't have to say a whole lot about Bruce Jenner, do I? <laughs> Let's just say my bubble got popped a long time ago, okay? But you can't look to a, to a man or as to, or to a woman, <laughs> as you would say. <laughs> Isn't that sad? Isn't that sad? But you can't look to humans. You can't look to people. And, you know, I still looked to, I looked to Jim Kirk. William Shatner. <laughs> this is before I was born again, okay? I'm just a little kid. But I wanted my name to be Jim because I want to be James Kirk. But then William Shatner did get to go in space, okay? But he's a human being. He's a man. So I look beyond that. He, God, I need to look to God. I, look, I need to go higher than just human people. I need to go to God. But I, but I also need to have God the influences that I can look at and see that they, they, that they do help me and, and I and have mentors. And, and I see that in Pastor Hagen. That's why I get so much out of his messages more and more because I'm seeing how much of a mentor and influence. Pastor Patsy, of course, and there's many others too. But we, we can get and glean things from people that have lived a life, have lived an example to us. Romans 1, 28 to 29 Romans 1, 28 to 29, Amplified Classic Edition. And so, since they did not see fit to acknowledge God or approve of Him or consider Him worth the knowing, God gave them over to a base and condemned mind to do things not proper or decent but loathsome until they were filled, permeated, and saturated with every kind of unrighteousness. Okay. <laughs> All right, we have some music there. <laughs> I did not put that in the message, okay? <laughs> Until they were filled, permeated, and saturated with every kind of unrighteousness, iniquity, grasping, and covetous greed and malice. They were full of envy and jealousy, murder, strife, deceit, and treachery, ill will, and cruel ways. They were secret backbiters and gossipers. So these are all things that, that they gave over to. God gave them over to these things, to the base and the condemned mind. So we don't want that. We, we don't want to get over into that area. We were created to know our Creator. Our number one priority in life needs to be getting to know Jesus, knowing Jesus. And then I'll just, I know Don talked about Josh Pennington. I just wrote a few things that really touched me from his um, message, turning adversity into advantage. Honor isn't meant to be an empty gesture. Honor and compliments are often general. Criticism is very specific. So he says, be specific in your honor. I like that. Be specific about how you honor people. And, and honor is due to, to others. And then he says, many of us are strong on faith, but weak on patience. Many Christians, many word of faith people, he said, are strong on faith, but weak on patience. Lord, Give me patience, but please hurry. Well, a dear, dear friend of mine who was a resident in the nursing home would tell me that every time I came to see him. But it, it, it's funny to laugh about, but it's so true. that Lord, we, want, we ask God for patience, but boy, hurry up and give it to me now. <laughs> we are created to ascend. Genesis 126. Genesis 126. I'm going fast. And God, then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So we were made in the image of God. We were created to ascend, to go higher. We are being conditioned, and this is where Don talked about, we are being conditioned through our government, and through people, and through a philosophy in our land, that we don't have to go through adversity. That's a life in a pit of hell, okay? 2 Timothy 2, 3. 
Listen to the Apostle Paul. 2 Timothy 2, 3. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You must endure. He didn't say pray it away. He didn't say if you had faith strong enough, it would be gone. He says you would endure hardship as a good soldier. And we know Paul wrote about all the different things that he went through, right? And I keep thinking about this. I'm thankful for parents that didn't coddle me. They didn't coddle my siblings either. We weren't coddled when we were kids. We had to face our own problems, our own battles. Mom wouldn't go to the, to the principal and, and say, well, you're, hurt, you're picking on my little so-and-so. Nope, she didn't do that. Dad didn't do that either, but we were pretty young when Dad died, so Mom pretty much raised us through junior high and high school. She didn't do that. You take care of yourself. You deal with it. I went out for football. I wasn't the greatest athlete in the world, but I knew it was something that was building endurance in me. I knew it was building character in me. Ooh. I knew um, some of the things that I, I went through in football, getting tackled, getting hurt, having bruises all over my arms, um, getting tackled. Or Actually, I tackled the quarterback in a JV game. I sacked the quarterback, and I hit my chin against his helmet, and the water boy came up and says, you got blood dripping from your um, chin. Of course, they tell the, the coach, oh, come on, keep going. It, you're not, you've got to play. <laughs> so I kept playing. I put something underneath some gauze or something, and I had to play the rest of the game. Mom took me to the ER in Hebron after that and got stitched up. But I played through the game. Back then, you didn't get coddled. Too many kids are getting coddled today. Too many kids, do, oh, you poor thing. I'm going to help you so you don't have to go through that. That's not doing them any favors. And there's a saying, and I know maybe you don't think it's faith, but what doesn't kill you will, will, will help you. Or what, you know, what won't kill you will strengthen you. Okay, that's it. What don't kill you will make you stronger, right? <laughs> but, you know, it really is true. You know, when you go through stuff, and I, I, I'm not... Love. I didn't love all the persecution and all the things I went through younger, but, boy, it made me stronger as a believer. And, you know, and it makes me think, you know, if I can get through that, I can get through other things too. Right. When I watched Pastor Patsy and the things that she went through, if, she can, if God can do that for her, why can't he do it for me too? Yeah. I know he can. If she can do it, that encourages me that I can do it too. Amen. Yeah. So be endure. You know, sometimes there are things that we have to endure. But just keep on going. Don't give up. Keep being an example to other Christians who are watching you. Amen? Praise God. Amen. There is a supply of the Spirit. What you need, there's a supply in the Spirit. I love that. Ego is the enemy. and un Ego is an unhealthy belief in your own importance. <laughs> and you know, Glenn Martin keeps me very humble. <laughs> he... He, he makes me laugh at myself sometimes and my thing, you know, some of the things that I do. It's okay. It's okay. Because we're not that hot, okay? <laughs> I'm not that great. But God is. I serve a great God. And he uses people like me. <laughs> it's, I have to be myself. And I make mistakes when I'm up here and say things I shouldn't say and mispronounce words and, and do all kinds of stuff. But God still uses me. Amen. We transfer blame to other people while the problem is our own ego and insecurity. <laughs> Don't blame others. Take credit or say, take the blame for it, okay? And you'll hear me, if I think that something I did, I'll be the first one to say, hey, that was my mistake. I should have done something differently, okay? So be humble, and you can go a long ways. Whew. God will exalt you. Don't exalt yourself. Amen? And then David Kramer, they can just call him Kramer around there. That's Ramus Kramer. <laughs> as long as we tolerate things in our lives, they will continue to be there. Mm, that's a good one. If we tolerate things in our lives, they'll continue to be there. You know, there's people that tolerate, I've heard stories. Some of you probably have, too. I've heard stories of mice, rats, 
cockroaches, people tolerating them, letting them eat the blanket or next to them, letting them live in their house. They tolerated that because they themselves were so unhealthy they couldn't do anything about it or they didn't care about it. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's gross, right. But think about some of the things that we tolerate in the spiritual or things that we listen to or do or talk about. So just think about that. What's in your heart will eventually come out in your life. What's in your heart will eventually come out in your life. Look at Matthew 12, 33, and 34. Matthew 12, 33, and 34. I'll get ready to, to close here. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen? And then 2 Corinthians 3.18 but we all, with unveiled faces, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So what you behold, you become. So we need, instead of letting a bunch of junk be in our hearts, we need to behold the glory of God, and we need to let the glory of God um, permeate our, our hearts. When we meditate on the Word of God, we are seeing Jesus. Your heart needs light. And he talked about meditating how important meditating is. And, and when you meditate, you will realize that fear is gone. When you meditate about Jesus being your healer for a little bit, meditate on Psalm 9110. It'll get you excited. I was doing it last night a little bit, and it's like, whoa, I'm excited. <laughs> wow, Jesus, by his stripes, I am healed. Just meditate on that for a few minutes. That will get you excited. And then Craig Hagan. I just want to say he is, oh, maturing and growing in God. And he said 2020 and 2021 have been the, year, the best years of his life. He has lost 105 pounds. He is encouraging me. <laughs> he, he asked the doctor, can I do this? Well, uh, the doctor says, well, don't you guys talk about my God can do all things? You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Don't you say that there? <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. My mom says that. You know, so he has done that in a year's time or so. He has lost 105 pounds, and he has 20 more to go. But you rise to a higher point. You keep ascending. You don't descend. You keep ascending. It's time to rise up and take our place. God wants men to rise up and take their authority naturally and spiritually. Men need to do that. I'm excited about our men's group on Tuesday nights that are coming for these years. It's we're getting about five years of doing this. This is awesome. I see growth in our guys. Don't be a peak and a valley Christian. Don't be a peak and a, or a peak <laughs> and a valley. The peak is high, the valley is low. Don't be a peak and valley. I used to say a roller coaster Christian, but don't be a peak and valley Christian. It's time for the church to get a hold of the authority that they have. Christianity is not a religion at all. It is a lifestyle. Just like he said, I didn't diet. He says, I had to adopt a new lifestyle. I know. <laughs> and he says, and it happens in the mind first. I know. But see, that, that's another thing that they said. You can say you know, but unless you do it. So, and, oh, I just about forgot in my backpack the things that you got to take with you. You need to know, and I didn't have time. I was going to have people tell me what they knew about salvation. You need to know how to, to tell somebody about Jesus and lead them to the Lord. You need to know how to pray for someone for their healing. You guys, every one of you needs to know how to do that. You need to know how to believe God for some money to pay your bills. It shouldn't be the pastor that has to do that for you. You should be able to do that for yourself. You should know how to pray for yourself or pray for other people that are around you. You should know how to read the Bible for yourself. You should be able to pick it up and not have to fumble through and not know where any of the books are. I'm getting bolder in my old age. <laughs> you should know where the, where the, Bibles, the books are because you have, it's become such a friend that you know where they're at. And if not, you can sing Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, and I'll sing it to you if you want me to later. <laughs> it works. And you need to be able to, to stand on your own faith. 
It doesn't have to be someone else's faith all the time. You need to be able to stand on your faith. And because of all that, you will never quit. I cannot be defeated, and I will not quit. Amen? How's that in a nutshell? <laughs> quickly, quickly. One more scripture here, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. And, he, and Craig used the, the, analogy, or the story of the three little pigs, and I loved it. And, and I think Beverly Burgess Capps um, did a, um, a story about it too. But the, third, you know, the, the first two lost their houses because the big bad wolf blew them down. But the, the third pig, he was smart. He got bricks and mortar. He built himself a brick house, and the big bad wolf couldn't blow it down because it's built on the solid rock, the rock of Jesus Christ. Build your house on the rock. Build yourself a brick house. Amen. Build your beliefs around the rock of Jesus Christ, not a bunch of, bunch of um, opinions and, 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 and things that happen, but build it on the word of God. Fear is, is the spirit of the devil. Too many preachers are preaching fear and their opinions. And here's another one he said, which is really good. I'm sure you've heard this before. No one is afraid of heights. They're just afraid of falling. <laughs> yeah, you're not afraid of heights. You're afraid of, of falling. <laughs> Faith is unquestioning belief. Faith is unquestioning belief. And then one last scripture, James 1, 6 through 8. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like the wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the Lord. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord, for he is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So don't be wavering. Be unquestionable in your belief, in your faith. Amen? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this time that we can minister and, and just... Um, be able to, to give some of the things that were imparted to us as, as men at the conference, Father, and impart them back to, to those here today. And Father, we just thank you that they'll help them to take what ministers to them and apply it to their lives. And we just thank you for what you're doing in our lives. And we're a work in progress. We know we're not perfect. But Father, we're going to follow after you. And we want to have a soft heart. We want to listen to you. And we want to be the men and women of God that you want us to be. And we're going to go higher. We're going to ascend. We're not going to go down. We're not going to go backwards. We're going to go forward with you. This church is going to go forward with you. We thank you for all that you're doing, Lord. And if there's anybody um, watching my Facebook Live today that doesn't know Jesus, um, Father, I just thank you that we need to have a heart for the lost. And we need to have a heart for souls to be saved. And, and Father, if, there's a, if you need to, to know Jesus, just say this prayer with me and believe this in your heart. Say this after me. Dear Lord, I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the dead. Come into my heart, Jesus, and be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for forgiving me and for cleansing me from all sin. Jesus, you're my Lord, my Savior, and my best friend, and I'll serve you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, your name is now written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And just make sure you get yourself into Bible-believing church. You can come here, or you can... Our services are Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. And I can't... didn't want to leave without saying we met some wonderful gentlemen, too. We sat by a guy who... Um, he is from Ottawa, Kansas, but he and his wife are living in Tulsa, and he is, like, in charge of the construction for the visitor center at ORU. And he's told, he showed us pictures of all that they're doing there, and they're painting all the buildings, like... The prayer tower is now not, it's not golden anymore, it's blue. And the city of Tulsa is really happy because they're spending millions of dollars in redoing the campus. And God is really blessing them. So that's really awesome to hear that. And then one of the, a young man who was an usher, we talked to him at the end, and he, and he saw Don's coat. He says, you're a husker. <laughs> he says, I'm from Norfolk, Nebraska. He, he's a first year student. And we just had a nice visit with him. And he, I, know, I don't know if you remember Brad Lee one that was here. It was Joey Rosita's associate pastor, the one that was burnt. And he, 
he, he, he knew Brad, and he knew the pastor Mike, and oh, he's been there for, going there for years, and so praise the Lord. It's a small world, and it was just really neat to, to make some connections, and the gentleman that, he, he just said, I want your address. I gave him our, our information, because he said, I may just, my wife and I may just come by here on our way somewhere north. He said, we may just come by and see you at your church. I said, Oh, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about, making these divine connections. Men, start planning. It, it, it's, it's worth it. Ladies, go to the Kindle of the Flame. Men, go to, go to Call of Arms. Start saving about 5 or, five to $10 a week. You'd have more than enough. If you guys would have waited five more hours, I would have been in the building. Really? Wow. The guys got to wait forever. Well, we have to be there by 7 o'clock that night. Praise the Lord. Who, who has... A um, prayer request. Yes, Darlene. My cousin Peggy has started that new chemotherapy, and she said it it makes him hurt from the inside out. I, I don't quite understand that, but he said it feels like the pain comes from the inside. Mm. Anybody else? Yes, Sharon. Um, for Tampa, and I prayed this morning as I was helping Danny and Alan for the weekly for Brad Bell. And You're going to monthly? Oh, yeah. praise God. Praise God. That is awesome. Anybody else? <laughs> Janet. They're locked down because of COVID, right? Anybody else? Praise God. Amen. Anybody else? Okay. Well, let's just pray. Father, according to Matthew 18, 19, we are agreeing in the prayer of agreement. And we just lift up Hobie, Father. And we just thank you. Pain, we speak to you. You be gone. Jesus took your infirmities and bore your sickness and your pain. Um, chemo, you cannot cause pain to his body. In the name of Jesus, you will not cause any harmful side effects whatsoever. We, rebu we, we, we um, not rebuke you, we sanctify you. Thank you. We sanctify you in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, that, that you will not ha cause any harm to him whatsoever. And for his whole well-being, he will not lose faith. His faith in you will not fail, Father. He's energized to keep on going. We just thank you, Lord, for the grace and the mercy that you have over him. And he is the heal of the Lord. He will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. With long life will you satisfy him and show your salvation. We speak life and health to his body. Every organ, every tissue of his body functions in the perfection which you created to function. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And we just thank you, Lord. We do lift up um, the good Sam. And we just thank you, Father. We plead the blood. And we claim Psalm 91. In Psalm 91, 10. No um, con contagious disease will come near you. We just thank you for Janet's sister. We just thank you for for Karen, for everyone else that's there, the, the staff, the residents, Father. COVID-19, you are dead and gone and underneath our feet. And we just thank you, Lord. They're, they're, they're protected, divinely protected. We plead the blood and claim Psalm 91. We thank you. For the, it will pass quickly. They'll be able to open up the nursing home soon. We just thank you for what you're doing, and we give you the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, thank you for coming today. We will have um, choir practice here shortly, and then at 1.30 we have play practice. And then we'll be back Wednesday night. So please come at 7 o'clock. We love you all. God bless you. Have a great day.